My name is Dr. Ekin Özer, and I'm a consultant at Catanion, a science-driven consulting firm for the biopharma industry. At Catanion, we leverage our science and technology expertise to develop strategies that help our clients drive innovation and bring new treatments to the market. This video is a part of the Catanion webinar series. Today we will talk about microbiome-based therapeutics, which are emerging drug class with a great potential in the biopharmaceutical industry. I will present you insights that represent the scenario as of January 2022, unless otherwise stated, and based exclusively on publicly available information. When we look at the history of microbiome field, it all started back in 1684 with the observations of Van Leeuwenhoek. He looked at the differences in the microbes of healthy and sick individuals showing that microbes can actually play an important role in the disease state. The years following that focused on sequencing the microbiome. In 2006, researchers have shown that host phenotypes can be transferred through microbiota transplantation. In 2008, NIH started the Microbiome Project, which has increased the interest of industry for the microbiome therapeutics. In 2016 and onwards, the microbiome therapeutic space has seen ups and downs. Recently, in 2020, the first positive phase three results for microbiome therapeutics was announced. So what is the microbiome? The human body is colonized by many organisms, including bacteria and viruses. These are collectively referred as the microbiome. On average, for every human cell, 1.3 bacterial cells colonize a human. When we look at the individuals, we see that everyone has a unique microbiome signature. This can change throughout the years, but even in the course of a day. What do we know about the microbiome? What knowledge do we still lack? We know that there are over 5,000 species and over 300 million genes identified. We have mapped about 85% of the microbial genome. We know that microbiome plays important roles in obesity as well as oncology. But we still don't have information about some of the microbial community members. We have problems in undersampling as well as identifying the functions of genes that have been sequenced. Metabolites are the products of microbial and host metabolism that regulate host immunity. These can be specifically useful for diagnostics because changes in metabolites can be rapid and can reveal the physiological state of both the host and its microbiota. Metabolites can cross barriers more freely than the microbes to cause effects in the distant sites in the body. On average, unrelated individuals share 82% of their metabolic pathways compared to 43% of bacterial species, making metabolites a very interesting target. In the last 10 years, research on microbiome and its metabolites has been increasing rapidly. In 2021, there were over 20,000 articles published on these subjects. Moreover, the number of funded microbiome research projects has increased dramatically in the last decade, with US clearly leading the field. Similarly, in the last years, we see a strong increase in the number of patent applications in microbiome therapeutics. So, who are the key players in the microbiome field? Serous Therapeutics is a late clinical stage biotech working on wide range of diseases through the modulation of the human microbiome. Vedanta Biosciences focuses on gastrointestinal disorders, infectious diseases, as well as oncology in their pipeline. Finch Therapeutics develops therapies for patients that are affected by conditions linked to the disruption of the microbiome. And lastly, Rebiotics, which has been acquired by Ferrin in 2018, is another clinical stage biotechnology company that focuses to treat diseases by utilizing the human microbiome. Other notable players 
that focus on bacterial replacement therapy include Enterome, Evolobiosciences, Second Genome, and Microbiotica. Axial Biotherapeutics and Kaleido Biosciences focus on metabolic therapy, whereas Locus Biosciences and Biomex are focused on phage therapy. Oligobioscience and Artisan Biosciences are developing what they call Precision Microbiome Therapy. When we look at the clinical trials, we see that the key players are all focusing on Clostridium difficile infections. And recently, in both Phase 2 and Phase 3 trials, they have shown promising data in reducing the number of recurrence of the disease. These clinical trial results have brought a major investment to some of the key players. Ceres Therapeutics has recently been in a deal with Nestle Health Sciences for $525 million. Vedanta Biosciences has gained an investment from Barda and Pfizer. Nevertheless, there are failures along the way. Ceres Therapeutics recently announced a failure from their Phase 2 study where they did not show a difference in the clinical remission of ulcerative colitis patients, showing that there are still bumps along the way. Regarding clinical activity, there are 78 ongoing trials on microbiome therapy as of January 2022. Most are in Phase 1 and Phase 2 stages. A large majority of ongoing clinical trials are focused on gastrointestinal disorders and infectious diseases, followed by oncology. After an initial hype in 2016, the microbiome deal landscape went into a plateau due to the failed phase 2 trials. 2020 was the peak of microbiome deals with the most deals on capital raisings. Among big pharma companies, J&J subsidiary Janssen Pharma has the largest number of collaborations in the field of microbiome therapeutics followed by Nestle Health Science and Takeda with many partnerships and licensing agreements. Recently, Abvi, Allergan and AstraZeneca have terminated their collaborations with some of the microbiome biotechs. Now let's move away from bacterial replacement therapies. Katanian believes that the microbiome metabolites are a more suitable target for diagnostics and treatment than the microbes themselves. Since the microbiome metabolites are more conserved between individuals compared to specific bacteria colonies and respond more rapidly to physiological changes. Another way to target the bacterial species are through bacteriophages which are viruses that have the potential to infect and destruct bacteria. Selectivity of bacteriophages makes it difficult to develop a one-size-fits-all solution for patients suffering from changes in their microbiome. Therefore, personalized bacteriophage therapies could be the future of antibacterial resistance and microbiome-based therapies. So far, there have been no fecal microbiota transplant products approved by the FDA. Recently, in 2019, after the death of a patient due to multidrug resistant organisms, the FDA has issued a warning about the risks of fetal microbiota transplant. As a conclusion, Catanian has mapped the hype cycle to give an overview of the microbiome therapeutic space. After Sirius Phase 2 trial did not meet its primary endpoint in 2016, there was a decrease in the interest of investors in microbiome therapeutics. Recent positive Phase 3 data from Sirius, Rebiotics, and Phase 2 data from Finch boosted the investment and the technology maturation. Catanian believes that the microbiome therapeutics field is still in its infancy. In the long run, a focus on metabolites is likely necessary to fully leverage the scientific potential of this class of therapeutics. This concludes today's Catanian webinar. Thanks for watching. Check out our other webinars and publications on our YouTube channel and website. 
Follow us on LinkedIn for our latest updates and send us an email if you want to get in touch with us. See you next time.